Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everybody on Zoom. Hi, everybody in the room. Um, I'm just going to do a quick introduction on my background, how I got started. My um, great friend here, Barb Backus, in the back here. Uh, we used to work together, so we're also going to be kind of doing this as a team. So, um, it's all good. It's all good. The more the merrier. That's why we're here, right? So, yeah, like <laughs> so just a quick raise my hands. Does anyone has anyone heard of, heard of design thinking before? Know what it is, or know a little bit about it? Okay, that's good to know. So, um, as I mentioned, my name is Don Busher. I am part of LPL Financial. Um, a lot of financial services background. Barb and I work together at Scott Trade, which is another financial services. Uh, and prior to that, I was at Enterprise Holding for a long time. Um, I've primarily done design move more into research and then the space of design thinking, which is just another form of, of research, um, but can help everybody. So our goal right now as researchers, we're trying to democratize it. So a lot of these practices can be applied anywhere. You don't have to be a certified researcher or a user experience designer to take some of these skills and apply it to your business. So I'll walk us through this a little bit. Then I'd love to go around the room and just hear maybe what brought you here. Um, what interested you about this concept, and then we'll get into an activity on the wall. So that's kind of the agenda for right now. So I'm gonna move the laptop over here. Okay, so yeah, just click it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be clear. Okay, as we talked about, so design thinking really is just an iterative method um, of deeply empathizing with others. So this could be have a small team, it's just a person. Maybe there's a problem you're trying to solve, or they're, you're not sure how to solve that problem. And really what it comes down to is bringing folks together from different backgrounds into a room like this, and having that opportunity to write down what are your thoughts, your concerns, what's in your head, let's get it on paper, and then also get it on the wall. And what you're probably going to find out is a lot of people will have the same concerns. And what it does is it really creates a great alignment so it is really invaluable to teams for tackling problems, whether it's at a school, at a yoga studio, and you're trying to figure <laughs> out growth, right? Uh, there's other industries and, and functions that this can really help with. So when you're trying to figure out what is 2022 look like for me? Well, work is great. Personal life, maybe I need to work on some things, or vice versa, right? Uh, it doesn't even have to just apply to work. You can apply to, to family or things that you're trying to figure out, right? So I just love this idea that design thinking for everybody, everybody has problems and we're all trying to figure out how to solve them. The hardest part is the solution, right? We all know the problem, but how do we actually fix it? And a lot of times it's just bringing everybody together. So I have a couple of examples. These were a few sessions I ran um, for TD Ameritrade when we were up in New York. So it was like traveling and bringing all of our stuff and then getting into a room. And as you can see, you just put technology away. Don't necessarily need a laptop. I'm showing it since we have Zoom, but you can use technology too. You make it, well, I'm in a room by myself. There's no way I could do design thinking just in a vacuum. But actually, we're going to show you how you can do that through different tools. There's Miro, Mural, and you can actually do it virtually. So that's what we're going to do today. Just to get the idea or concept, the goal really here is to give you guys the tools that you can do this with your own teams, democratize it. Maybe you can use it in your practice, um, or maybe you can use it with different groups. Maybe it might not work for you right now, but maybe in six months you're like, oh, I did this thing, let's try it. Let's just get out some post-it notes. Let's get people in a room and let's talk. So that's hard nowadays, right? And it even got harder during COVID. Like how in the world do I accept a job to do this when we can't do this, right? So we learned a lot of tips and tricks along the way. So um, this is essentially um, kind of what we're gonna be doing today. And I'm gonna show a couple of exercises. I just also wanted to share, um, you know, this activity really is, with the topic of mindset and attitude. So this is a safe space, anything you feel or you say. And a lot of times when we do these activities, we say, this is a safe space, there's no wrong answer. So a lot of times people come and they're like, oh, who's gonna be there? What's their title? What can I say in front of them? And we say, put your phones away, put your laptops away. It doesn't matter what your title is or what level you are. We're just talking, sharing ideas. There is no such thing as a stupid idea or a stupid question. It may sound silly to say that, but as soon as we say that, people become incredibly honest as soon as they know it's a safe space. So that makes sense. All right, so I think I've just had a couple of examples. Oh yeah, this was fun. So I just like to include this because it was totally random, but we did do a workshop and for this idea it was, uh, it was a new product, a new concept. So we're all scribbling down ideas and the person running it said, okay, 
that have gift cards. You're going to go down to the street and get the feedback. And we said, what? <laughs> so it was a research of like, oh, I didn't plan any interviews. He's like, no, you're literally going to go down to the street in Chicago with gift cards and get feedback on your ideas. And I'm like, okay. So we did. And actually this woman was not driving. She was actually parked. So she did not get hurt by any means. <laughs> But actually what he's holding are ideas that came out of a workshop like this. It was, I have a new idea. I have a concept for this, this topic we're talking about. He scribbled it down on white paper and we went out to the street and we said, Hey, you know, for 15, $20 Amazon gift card, we want to get your feedback. And it's just that iterative cycle of here's my idea. What do you think? Oh, you like it? Love it? Well, then let's keep working on it. But it's that instant feedback of just going to someone and saying, here's, here's my idea. What do you think? So that was just like a, a fun sort of gorilla like in the wild research that we're doing. Uh, we can hand this out uh, after this session, but I just put in here some resources for you guys if you want, are thinking of running your own workshop. It's got all the tools, all the tricks that you need. Really, you just need a room, some people, post-it notes, and a wall, right? If you're on Zoom, that's what we're going to go through next. We're going to talk about Miro. But these are just some takeaways that if you decide that you want to do this on your own and need the support, it's all there. So. Um, with that, I'm going to pause. That's what Brian meant. said, how to make, make you them. Tell me why you're here. What interested you about this activity? Well, I'm supposed to be figuring out how to do a Canva. You? Hi, my name is Kelly Bauer. Um, I own Offbeat Yoga in Chesterfield, and I uh, saw that Dawn was doing this, and I was like, I need to come because if, uh, she's been taking my yoga class. Um, but yeah, I was interested in just kind of the problem solving aspect, and you know, we have a we have a team of teachers too, and so I would love to get them more involved. Yeah. yeah. I'm Debbie Chwari. Um I have a marketing consultant um, consultancy, and uh, well, I saw I was just working outside and saw Sarah and Cheryl coming in. Like, what am I missing? <laughs> but, um, but yes, no, I am. I am yeah, exactly. I'm always <laughs> looking for new tools and ideas. And um, also, I would love to learn more about Miro because I know that's used a lot in my story brand community. And I think there's a lot of it's a great tool. And yeah. I love post-it notes. Yes, <laughs> post-it and they're virtual post-it. So <laughs> Uh, my name is Laura Goldsticker. I actually just joined Rise. So um, I work fully remote. I work for Whole Foods Market in corporate uh, finance. And so uh, my whole team's remote. So I'm kind of interested to hear what you have to say about doing exercises like this with a remote team. But also, just personally, I think this would be super helpful for me to kind of like streamline my own ideas. I tend to like think of 15 things at once and then get kind of bogged down in what, like how to prioritize. So it sounds like this might be a good resource for me for that, for that too. Yeah. So, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Cardi. I work in finance as a media operations coordinator. And I recently started a grad program at St. Louis University for geospatial information science. And I'm studying the flooding of New Orleans for the past 20 years and seeing what's worked and why and so I think this would be interesting to streamline how to communicate what I'm learning as a data scientist to others. Oh, yeah. I'm Angie Ackerman. I just joined Sarah Kruger in Accio Search. So I'm a new um, office person, I guess, here in Rise member. Um, and I love post-it notes as well. And um, <laughs> bring everybody just, together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our former colleague, Trisha Sanders, actually introduced us to the online mirror. Yeah, that that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just interested in, in learning more about it. Awesome. Uh, Cheryl Fisher, I have a massage room over in the corner here, and uh, I've been with Rise for a half a year now. Um, I don't know why I'm here. I was interested. <laughs> and I, I like learning. So, awesome. hi. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's Sarah, Sarah Kruger, and uh, Angie and I run a search practice. And so, um, hiring can be a really big, messy process if you don't have process. Right. And this seemed very methodical. And I thought, well, let's just see it is what great it's all for about. process. We yeah. use this all the time for different various different things. But I thought for this particular event, we keep it simple. This is actually technically really like a 15 to 20 minute exercise. But I wanted to make sure that you guys understood what is the tool? How do you use the tool? How do you get people into the tool? How do you add things to the tool? 
because sometimes we have meetings and it will take 15, 20 minutes for people just to get acclimated. And that's totally normal and that's totally acceptable. And that's kind of how it goes. Um, so for those folks on Zoom, um, you know, I think you guys should have access to the board or should be able to. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're going to switch over now so yeah. I can see what's yep. going on up here. Mm -hmm. We are going to have folks that are in the room actually writing on post-its, but you're going to be doing a virtual mm -hmm. version of that. So if you're in the board and have access, this is a great icebreaker that works for everybody. <laughs> what is your favorite 80s movie, right? Um, and we typically do that on the board here, but you guys can also write down what is your favorite 80s movie, and we'll start with that while they're trying to figure that out. So if you guys want to get out those post-it notes and think about it. Oh, yes, absolutely. Here, yeah, like, you know, no questions yet. No, no questions. Okay. Kind of default here. Do we have folks on the board yet? Let's see. 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 Let's Essentially, this is going to replicate this. So I can, as you guys are kind of writing, the great thing about this board is you can have a free account. Um, you can test it out. It doesn't cost anything right away. We have an enterprise account. I think we have, gosh, probably 100 plus people on Miro right now with tons of different boards for different reasons. What's great about Miro, uh, Mural is this very similar one, uh, which I always get confused with. It's like, you say Miro, it's like Hero is what they kind of come up with the name that's what someone has. But anyway. Um, but it, it's really easy in the sense of when you join, you can get that free account, you can set up a couple of boards and just test it out. Um, they have a ton of templates. So if you're thinking, you know, for streamlining a process, right? You've got, you're trying to bring in people for your business or you want to allow other instructors to give some ideas. Um, it's nice because you can own it. You can add people as just commenters or editors um, and, and sort of set up this, this workspace. So on the side here, this is where you're going to use a lot of these functions. So this is, you know, you got a frame here. This is the biggest, most important thing. These are your post-its. And what I've done here is I've already set up some post-its um, that you can just go in and start typing. So we can probably scroll down a little bit. Let's do this. So on the board, if you guys are online, we should be able to come down here and scroll. So here, a lot of things happen in this space. So you've either got, I think we call it like the Mickey Mouse hand. So you have a, like a high five. So it's going like this. That's when you can move stuff around and you can kind of explore on the board itself. What's really cool is, you know, these, these post-its I've already um, kind of created ahead of time. But you basically just have a post-it and then you go, ooh, what color do I want? Like red, okay, I want red. And then you just stick up on the board and you start typing. Like, um, is, is fun. <laughs> it is fun. So what happens is we'll have 20, 30 people on a call and you just see all the names going and you'll say, okay, what's your favorite 80s movie? You know, you're writing it down. So in this case, when you guys are in the room, if you have your shirt down, then you'll just go and put it on the wall, right? So we'll do that with the hopes and fears activity. So does everybody get the sense of what we're doing here? If you guys want to add, you can, or if you're just observing um, on Zoom, you can add some notes in there. Um, so this is what we're really gonna do. So what I think we should do now, um, if everybody's uh, acclimated to this, we'll do some questions, but I'd love to focus on you guys here in the room too, right? So we're gonna start with hopes, right? So anytime we do a meeting like this, to get everybody in context of why we're here, whether it's financial services related, or if it's just in general, like for 2022, what are your hopes for the year, right? So. It's just more of a, whether it's personal or professional, uh, you can write down multiple. You might have multiple hopes, right? So we'll start with the hopes. And so what you're going to do is we're going to spend probably just five to 10 minutes uh, thinking about what you want to write down. And so you're going to write those down on the post-it. So for 2022, whether it's personal or professional, hopes are just like goals. Like what do you want to achieve, right, in 2022? So I have a vision that, so for 2022, loving my job, I don't know if I want to be a people manager. I'm kind of fearful, but I'm hopeful our team is growing. Do I really want to think that through, right? So those are going to be some examples of my hopes. So you guys are just going to take a couple of minutes, think about it. Um, once you have two or three, you can start putting them up 
on the board. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you guys do it. Okay. So here's what we're essentially doing. There's a lot of common themes, right? This is the cool part. It's like there's all this stuff going on in your brains and our brains, and they're very similar. And so this is what we start doing. Typically, if we have a big group, we might actually have you guys group them yourselves. I just thought it would take time. But if there's you and another team member or multiple team members, typically you want them to start grouping them. So what we started doing with this side, just for the sake of time, as you can see, like what's happening, right, is there's like personal stuff. That's good, right? um, but then there's work stuff, right? And then there's travel stuff. Right. So there's some really great things here, like COVID. Yes. As soon as we saw this, we're like, yes, I want this to end. <laughs> or like, I, I just want to be more president. Oh, president, sorry. Or yes, I have this atomic habits, but that reminds me, like, I need to pull that back out again and I need to read that. That's, this is a great goal for my 2022, right? So here we have a lot about traveling again, you know, um, just coming back from the trip. I didn't realize how much I missed traveling. I don't miss airports. But getting from one place to another, absolutely awesome. So I love this, you know, creating a community in St. Louis. Um, that's the purpose of the content. So there's a lot of things here where we're thinking about all of these similar things at the same time, right? So you can see how this can work on a very, you know, more uh, honed in topic, right? We're talking very broad about 2022, and we've already established this pattern here, here, and here. So we've got five things really that everybody thinking about whether it's business personal travel and that's what it helps right especially in virtual world when you're on boards like this everybody's coming at a problem with a different perspective and then you realize wait a minute we're all thinking about the same thing we just haven't written it down we're not necessarily talking about it maybe we can talk about it in different ways or we're using different words but so um, do you have any yeah, questions? Yeah. that always surprises me too because you'll come up with these hopes and dreams and you're thinking you're so unique or you're a little bit nervous to put it up there but in the end if, if you always find themes in every board i've noticed yeah very few times do you have you know singled out outliers so it kind of helps you realize you're going in the right direction if you're working at using right. this tool as a way to hone in on a solution and i don't know if this was you know sydney or barb or kelly or anyone from the group i don't know who said that but i'm like oh i can relate to that and then you're like oh i wrote that all. you know because then you're like you feel a connection and that's what we've missed right for the past 18 months and you can do that on the board and, and start adding stuff i see oh someone's in there writing some stuff see Hi. Yay. so it's exciting to see that you're like oh my gosh what is up here what did they just put on so um you can see that's the purpose right is, is that alignment it's really important especially where we work we've got huge teams some are developers and there's a lot of siloed activities going on when you actually bring everybody together and say, look, I just need half an hour or I need 15 minutes of your time to write up, like, what's your hope for the next year? And then you find out everybody's thinking the same thing. They just may not be comfortable saying it. It's about building that empathy of, like, oh, okay, I get it. This is what you're concerned about. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of how it works. And we look at fears. This is always a fun one. And it's usually less, right? Like, you would look, yeah, kind of afraid to tell us our fears, you know, like, um, you know, it's, a big thing to think about, right? So yeah, injury yeah. costs, client costs, closing business, like that is a, a huge fear. Um, market changes, like these are things we may not have control over, right? So when we think of those fears, yeah, COVID upswing, right? Like this, this is on everybody's mind, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, I think we're all feeling that. And definitely stretch too thin. I mean, who isn't right now? This is real. So what are some of those small little changes you can make? Um, and I'm finding myself trying to do that after my trip I came back from is like, how do I be more present? How do I think about, you know, intention for my day? Oh, you know, it's like such a yogi thing, but I love it because setting your intention for the day isn't just yoga. It is your work. It's what am I going to have for lunch today? Is it going to be healthy? Um, what are some of those micro changes? And I think it can help with those fears too, right? If we just take this massive cloud and even just start writing post-its using Miro, to get it out of your head and get it on paper. Um, so I think this is, you know, yeah, definitely only in St. Louis and working remote. I can 100% relate to that. You know, it's hard um, being sort of extroverted. You're really extroverted. Um, so I like people. I like to be around people. I got a cat because I thought, well, I'm alone. My son's at school, my husband's at work. 
I must get a cat, right? Like, <laughs> and she's there. She's just sitting in the room, like, hey. And of course, she pops on Zoom and she feels like it. But she's there, you know. So that was like the greatest thing for me. Like, how do I tackle that our fear of loneliness? Well, maybe getting a pet is not for everybody, <laughs> but it's one of those things. But yeah, I won't have enough money to retire early in 2023 um, as he desires, right? And a lot of people are leaving work. My husband is like, oh God, you know, like, well, what are you going to do for the next? you know, 30 years. I don't know. I'm like, that's not a plan. <laughs> so that's my number one fear. What are we going to do with him? <laughs> uh, so, so back to Maui and keep working for Maui. Yeah. Um, um, so anyway, um, so yeah, I, I think these are really valid fears. I think we've seen where this is ripping out. It's like, oh my gosh, yes. Word failure, fear. Um, what's going to happen with if children to expand? And it just, it gets it out there so you can start talking about it. And when you start realizing there's similar fears, then you can talk about it collectively together. Um, you know, this is great a starting activity to then say, okay, let's think of solutions, let's think of ideas. Maybe you need a process workflow. Like, I don't know how this works. How did someone request this? Or how do we move this forward? How do I share this out so that the information is, is understandable and digestible, right? But some of that takes thought. But once you know how everyone's feeling in the room, then you can go, oh, okay, here's what we're gonna focus on because it makes them feel heard. So I don't know, again, I don't know who said any of these things, but I'm aware and I understand. So that's essentially the goal is building that empathy. And there's tons of different types of activities. I thought this was a good one just to start with to get everybody introduced to it. I've been talking a lot, but were there things that you guys were drawn to when you heard the hopes and fears after we kind of grouped them? Anybody, anything resonate with it? I do think it's just a good reminder. I think COVID has like insulated us. And so to we all feel like we're struggling alone and especially on the fear side, like it's nice to see it's like the patterns that we all have similar um, and hopes like interest fears. Like it kind of reminds me like, okay, like I'm not just trying to figure this out by myself. Like other people are going through the same thing and just give a bit more optimism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Do you see how this can work for you? Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're like, mm, I don't know how I'm going to use this. And that's okay too if this is not ideal. There's other examples that would work for you. I think one thing that's interesting from my perspective is how much I focused on my business. Um, where typically, I think I like that my my mind is going more towards things I can control. Like I didn't even put up there about COVID or I know somebody put up on this Miro board about polarization and then all these things that just like stress me out because I, but I have no control over them. Right. And so I think that's something I've really been working on over the last year or so is like control what I can, yeah. you know, let go of what I can. Right. And, and I think we're seeing it more and more, right? Like I, telling you I got you know we're on the plane flying home and it was it's an argument that happened you know and you're like oh is this how it starts is this how the video started and I immediately was like excited I'm like I gotta go up and use the restroom I'll be back like I just wanted to get out of the situation but I'm on a plane I can't get out of the situation so I run to the bathroom not, not the best way to deal with anxiety because like there's definitely flight attendants on the plane dealing with it but it got me thinking you know I'm like why don't they have social workers on here? You know, like they have other ways to deal with conflict, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until that was in that moment of like, oh my gosh, what do we all do? And everyone's like, what do we do? Can we be like, no, you can't do anything. You know, like there's, you know, it was just a, a disagreement and it wasn't like anything uh, broke out. But then, you know, you're like, oh, that, you, that just happens on TV. And you're like, oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> right? <laughs> until you went. So I think, you know, it just got me thinking of different ideas of like, what could be the solution that protects flight attendants and people on planes, yeah. social workers, right? And yeah. they're desperately needed right now. Um, and I think we can advocate for that, right? Mm -hmm. It was just like one idea popped in my head of like, I'm really scared right now. What would help me feel better would be someone that knows what they're doing, right? Because I felt better for, for everybody else. So, you know, this is just, again, one, one example of activities. There's other activities you can do. Um, actually, there's a workshop that work taking place right now where they're doing similar boards. And it was more of lessons learned, like they were going through a merger and they're like, well, this fell apart and this was great. 
but nobody knows this great stuff because nobody that's on the team now dealt with it. So it's like very tribal knowledge when these things happen, right? So the, the good idea for this is, you know, if you're growing your business or the business is evolving and changing, is putting it down, writing it down, like what happened? Because I do the same thing. And you'll forget six months ago, like we had a great workshop and they're like, oh, what was that one thing we did? And then you go back to the board and go, oh, that's right. I'm just going to borrow that. And I think one thing to add too is, um, you know, to your point earlier about there's no, you know, this is a safe space. There's no right or wrong answer is being completely truthful. And then you find too that the things you put down on the post-its are the things that are kind of top of mind weighing you down. And once you get it out, it's almost a starting point to acknowledge it and then take those next steps forward to, you know, understand the themes and then what's next and keep doing the, you know, what's next after that, right? If it's going to be a product, right? Bigger than a red yeah. box, smaller than a forest. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You know, and it's just, yeah, what does this actually impact about that, right? Like, I'm so worried about this, too. Does that mean I can't go back to my studio anymore? What am I going to do? You know, like, uh, I'll be back in that, you know, um, cycle, that washing machine cycle. And then how do we just, you know, handle that, but scaling it back so it's manageable? Yeah. Question. Um, yeah. So do you always label it hopes and fears, or do you kind of just decide whatever the problem is and then kind of decide whatever you're going to label those yeah i changed it so like in business sense i was like opportunities constraints yeah. like whatever <laughs> yeah. no one <laughs> you want to use they're like oh business jargon again we're going to circle back you know <laughs> <laughs> business terms you're like oh you know uh, we do, uh, yeah, yeah. We do what's working now, what's not working. Yeah, so what, yeah. Well, 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 so what didn't work so well. Okay. There's a positive in it. So it really could be a positive and negative of whatever it is that you're doing. But, but that's a great question. Yeah. Any other questions? Any thoughts on what we did today? So how would you use this Miro, for example? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a solo entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So how would I do this or use this? working through that on, you know, things that I need to do mm -hmm. on my own. Um, first thought that jumps to my mind is, do you know other similar entrepreneurs that are doing the same thing as you are? Mm -hmm. you sure, know? yeah. So then you get them together and okay. you say, what worked well for your business and what didn't work so well? Can you share with me what you learned, right? Here's women who are willing to share a lot of things with each other, right? right. Um, to support each other and make sure your business is going well. If you have friends that are doing something similar and you just happen to have them coffee, then say, hey, you know, love to get your thoughts. Can you write them down on this board? Um, or, you know, bring them together, have it on your computer and just be type like, hey, do you mind if I just take a couple of notes? And you can almost do it like that meet at Starbucks with some people that are in the same business as you and ask them, like, what went well? What didn't go well? I think people are very willing to share that kind of stuff. At least I found. Yeah, and I think you'll find that naturally kind of evolves into a conversation of, you know, I've really always thought of, I wanted to try X or Y, you know, and it kind of starts into this brainstorming session that just kind of organically occurs based on just getting the information out of your mind, what's top of mind, and then it takes it to the next step. Yeah. Or if it's hopes, if it's travel, and you just took a trip, and you're like, mm -hmm. What would have I done differently, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe not fly in at 1 a.m., right, from Vegas, right? Like, that would have been a good option for me. <laughs> so maybe not do it ever again. Um, you know, or you could even do that with family stuff, too, or, you know, moving. Like, what what do I need to think about? Um, did someone else just recently move there? What should I know? Where are the best places to do things? Right? We're doing that already. It's just documenting it, kind of tucking it away so you don't have to keep it up here all the time. Because we know once we put too much stuff up here, it just is like, well, you're, you're dead at the end of the day, right? You can't think. So I think we're already doing those things. This just makes it easier and practical to say, look, this is how you can apply it in your business and home life. Um, I think Miro's uh, very helpful. There's Mural. I think there's another one. Is it tr uh, Trello or Trello? Trello. Yes. Awesome. Trello is another great one. Um, it's more of like that planning organization, uh, mm -hmm. personal like lists and stuff. I, right. I haven't used right. it a ton. I've thought about using it for schedules, checklists, that kind of stuff, digital, like maybe to share with teams or whatever. So question. What would be like the next step after this? After you put everything up on there as your hopes, your fears, what would the next process be? Like talking about all of that or kind of like collecting them like you did in a group and then kind of going through each one? Yeah, that's a great question. So what we were doing is typically what we do, we'd see like, oh, okay, well, there's seven post-its. So this is a big problem, yeah. right? Or one, one of the bigger ones. These all are important. 
But since this impacts everybody, and that's why we're here, let's focus on this one and we'll take a deep dive into hopes about how can we grow the business? Okay, well, let's look. What is that? And you start drilling down. What is that business? Okay, well, if it's search and looking for people, like how do you do that in candidates work? There's so many jobs out there and so many few candidates. Like, what are some of the <clears throat> the ways that you can think of reaching out to them um, that may be unique, right? And that you hadn't thought of. It could be an opportunity to start doing some competitive analysis, like what's going on out there that we should be aware of. What are some of the cool tools uh, that people are using to to find people, right? And then you just sort of drill down, right? That's typically yeah. how I've done it too. I mean, you're looking at this from such a broad lens. This helps you narrow the focus. And then once you get here, even looking at Okay, help grow the business, business success. There's another group. You know, you just keep narrowing in. And then you start those conversations about once you get it out of your mind, out of your what's you know weighing on your what your thought was, then you start into that organic uh, brainstorming process to the next steps, um, depending on what process you're working on. If it's self-improvement or building a product, you know, what are the next steps? Like planning out a seasonal open and closed door membership, like that's very specific and something you could really take a deep dive on and go, okay, again. What is the landscape? What's my competition? Number one, like what am I? What am I looking at? Am I, can I be competitive? Can I, do I have a differentiator? Like, you know, is it a, a membership program that is flexible? Like, can you pause at any moment because of COVID? Right, that's the number one fear. So then you're like, well, what can I do in COVID that can encourage people to keep this membership going? Right, and then you do interviews. Like, if, what type of membership? Like, do you want? Talk to your clients that you currently have and say. Yeah, I had a friend she wanted to join, but you know she's just not sure with COVID how she feels, right? Um, just more of you know thinking of the yoga space just because it's top of mind, um, you know. But there's good questions like that of then okay, well, then you can kind of figure out. That's where research comes in, where we then go out and talk to people. So a lot of times I'm running these, but then going, oh, okay, this is maybe a problem we need to validate or invalidate. Maybe this really isn't a problem, but let's go find out and do some research and then come back. And you kind of go through this all over again. You just keep digging and digging. Another great exercise is the five whys. Uh, five whys. <laughs> and you basically become a five-year-old. You go, why? And then you're like, because we don't have enough people, but why? Well, we're in a hiring freeze, but why? And then you just say why over and over. And it's it's an old method from Toyota. Um, I think they started that, what, 20 years ago, maybe? Um, it's still really relevant today. It's a great exercise. Nero has a board for that where you start with that first question. Um, you know, so you're you're joining a new team and you're trying to figure out processes. Well, why do we do it this way? Um, how can we do it differently? Why aren't we doing it differently? And then you just kind of get down to the root cause of the problem, right? So a lot of times there's a problem and there's a solution, but you have to actually get through a lot of filters to figure out what the true problem is, right? So I think a great example. Um, was also through another exercise of jobs to be done is they saw a huge uptick in the mornings people were getting a shake um, from McDonald's and they're like oh that's great we'll just add more flavors and they're like well do you know why they're getting a shake at like eight o'clock in the morning that seems like a very <laughs> heavy <laughs> food <laughs> I already want a chocolate shake and so they went to the, the McDonald's they went to several of them they'd watch in the window and they they take the shake and they just ask them real quick, oh, where are you headed? And they're like, oh, I got a really long drive. And I can't eat a burger or a sandwich both hands of driving, but I can pick up a shake. And they're like, oh, they're just trying to kill time. It's not about the shake. It's not about the flavor. It's not about necessarily the nutrients. It was something to keep them busy while they were on a really long commute. Doesn't necessarily apply anymore. So if anything, it's probably gone down, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it's like, oh, I wouldn't have thought that was the reason they were getting the shake. You know, like it was came down to they started doing why did they hire that that food to get them through the day, and it was just because they were bored, right? And they needed something to keep them busy. Not the best reason to get a shake, <laughs> but, but it solved their problem. It solved their problem, right? So, so that's a lot of those things where you start digging in, just asking over and over that same question. It sounds repetitive, kind of like going back to school a little bit. But we've seen it, and it works. It does yeah. work. You know, you start feeling that empathy and going, oh, okay, we're here for the same problem. It's not your personality or your opinion. You know, it doesn't matter what level you are, you're all coming here to try and solve the problem. So, in some ways, too, some of these processes are equalizers. So, you have, you know, all different levels in a room sometime, and, you know, you're all going through these um, exercises with some degree of 
I say this word right? Anonymity. An 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Never say it right. But you know, it's a great, great equalizer because you don't know who put that up there, and but you together recognize that that's a theme, and then you jump on that to try to solve that problem together. <laughs> but sometimes it's just the yeah, logistics, it's, yeah, right. people in a room, right. physically doing the activity or doing it, yeah, on, on the Miro board. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things about Miro, just you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of great templates out there. I'm happy to share some of those. There's a lot of great things you can do. You can bring in links. You can bring in other documents. It's a really good resource. A lot of projects we find it is like a dumping ground, and then we'll just dump in a bunch of post its, and they'll go, oh, this doesn't look anything legible and we kind of go back but it's a way to do some analysis so we do a lot of things called journey mapping so that's essentially like how does someone hear about me and my business and how do you take that all the way through to uh, purchase or sale right um, we do that a lot with, with working with advisors like how long does it take them to onboard and bring over because there's a lot involved in repapering moving accounts there's a lot of moving parts and how do you make that experience not just better for the advisor, but better for their clients. So we start saying, okay, what's step one, step two, step three? Oh, okay, this is the problem. You need to drill down. And so that's how we use some of these things here to build out process maps. So um, you just keep drilling down and drilling down. But it gets you to the it, solving the problem. It gets you yeah. to the root cause. So. so any thoughts, questions for us? Any other questions? Was this helpful, useful, uh, entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what you're entertaining. It looks like we have a picture of 16 candles. Love it. Although, it couldn't be made today. Has anyone watched it recently? <laughs> I just watched it this week. No, it's it's a little done 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 it. Yeah. 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 It's a little inappropriate on so many levels, but you know, I just, yeah. 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 So, all right, so Kevin, um, I'm seeing yeah, yeah. 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 talk at yeah. Oh, I heard that. Are they already doing this? So they already did it, oh, and it is it? filmed. But like with everything with COVID, kind of like Bond film, they've been holding it mm -hmm. to like more people. Uh, that's why at Christmas you're gonna see like 20 video movies come out because they're oh, holding it yeah. for when people are more likely to go to the movies so, to yeah. escape their families. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I think, you know, definitely try it out. Um, keep it small like this and, and just do one activity at a time. Um, we got sucked into some projects where we'd be on a Zoom call from 8.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon, one Zoom all day. And I do not recommend that for anybody. So don't do it. Um, but little nuggets like this, you get people together, you get to know a little bit about them. Your favorite movie, one of her favorite food, that's another good one. Um, yeah, so. Do you typically like teach this? Um, like, like your like leaders or how to do this, or do you, or do you like facilitate it for like the whole company? It, it's a little bit of both. We can't uh, do it for the whole company. I would love to, but then I would be in workshops all day, every day. <laughs> I enjoy it. I think you do too, right? Because it's it's fun. We are. That's what we mean by democratizing. We're trying to make sure that we set up templates like this, and then others can go and do it. So the workshop that's running today, I'm like, oh, they have pushed them together. It's really cool. They don't need me. Like, and I'm happy by that. I, it's not that you're doing it wrong. There's no way to do this wrong. It's post-its, it's people, and you're putting on the board. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the most important part of this. It's like, I don't own this. You guys do, right? Because you brought the information. I'm just making sure that we're putting it on a board in the right place. So that's what makes us facilitators. So we're trying to teach others in a very corporate sense, a center of excellence, which is never it always makes you laugh too. So yeah. like saying it, I feel like I need a cake or something. I, know. Um, I don't have a cake, but um, anyway. Do you find, like, just kind of going off that, do you find the corporate culture where you've ever worked has kind of been not collaborative in a sense? It's been hard to implement a process like this? You know, yes. yes. Jones, maybe. <laughs> a little harder. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, Wait, it depends on the corporate. Yeah, I think it yeah, depends on the environment, you know, like the team sometimes, yeah. The teams. But at the same time, somewhere that's conservative has been very open to it because right. of their limitations, right? So you may find that it may apply great to one particular group that's open to talk about it. And some others may struggle and be like, in a, are the rooms quiet? That's the worst, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, you know, not even necessarily, um, you know, 
folks are like, what are we doing? Like, what's going on? And then once they get into it and, and figure out, they, they actually see the results of it. They're like, oh, we need to do more of this, right? Um, so they're trying to get their teams to do it. And so they definitely were slow, but they came around, say, yeah. I would say. You'll right. see a lot of, if you have some higher level folks in the room working on it, you'll see a lot of resistance at yeah. first. Yeah. And just not even willing to write down a post it, yeah. but I've seen days at Oracle, we used to have those long days in person, and it, I would see days of them, you know, or first thing in the morning, just resisting it. And by the end of the sessions, all of them, end of the week, they were like, oh my God, why have we never done this before? And, you know, it was like yeah. changing for them, right? Because we get in habits, right? We just yeah. call in and we're multitasking and we're not necessarily listening. And then, you know, in, in some cases, when we're in a room, we physically take people's phones and computers and put them away. Like we tell them to put that on the table because you shouldn't be answering emails while we're doing this because it means you're just not focusing and we need just this 15 minutes of your time to do it. It sounds silly when we do it and then they take it away and they're like, okay, I feel good. Like it's a breather and they are focused. And it's okay to say that, like put your phones on the table, set expectations. There's no such thing as a stupid question or a stupid response, having that. And then the end of the day too, I think allows people just to be, put those guards down for just 10 minutes. And then you go out of it. So I don't know if that answers your no, question. No, absolutely. No, it does. Like it yeah. works. Um, and sometimes you just have to think about, you know, it's timing too. Sometimes you might be yeah. like, why are we keep spinning on something? And sometimes you'll be like, why are we still talk talking about this topic for like the last 20 minutes and we haven't gotten anywhere? And then you're like, okay, we probably need to move this to a board. Or you just open it and you start typing what someone just said. And they're like, oh, I meant this. And then they change their words, right? Because what they're saying is not actually what they're meaning. So as they start seeing it, even like you said, the person that doesn't yeah. want it physically right on post it, and you're like, right. okay, well, I'm going to do it for you. And yes. here, I'm going to put it up there. there. And they're like, oh no, that's not yeah. no, that's not what I meant. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, it's out there. Do you want to change it? Or I can change it. And you kind yes. of <laughs> trick, them. <laughs> trick them. Yes. Well, not trick. Them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Open to change. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 But yes, there's lots of different ways you can describe this exercise, but it's whatever fits and works for you in your business, right? So. And working in a large corporate structure, I, some of the times the changes have come from a small team like the LA office or the New York office. You can get one team or even the team that you work on, and it may take, some, we've had a few things that are now, now considered open and open to change, but it, it's had to start with a small team that was already open to it, yeah. to where then it would slowly, someone would mention it in another meeting. So, and then a few years, you'd have, um, you know, a CEO who's not typically, oh yeah, we had talked about our feelings and I'm going, great. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful <laughs> exercise. So it's, you know, it, sometimes it, it does take a small team. And, yeah. yeah. So like, I've been talking about this for months and I was like, okay, well, let's recruit some. So that's all we got. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Thank I you. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of great questions. So really, thank you all for the engagement. It's all yeah. work if we aren't all talking about it. So. Well, thank you, everyone.